did a Penn State player or two or whatever contact you? Is that how that started? Bill mentioned, Bill mentioned you yesterday. Yeah, right. Yeah, he mentioned it yesterday. And, and, and basically, this is what I'd say about the whole thing. Uh, first of all, I think what, what's going on in that regard is extremely complex and confusing, quite frankly. Mm -hmm. So, you know, probably uh, the best path for anybody is to make sure they're in compliance, mm -hmm. which I'm still fuzzy on a lot of things there. And then the other thing I think is you know, handle it in whatever way you feel is appropriate. I think a lot of people are taking a lot of different approaches to it. Uh, I'm really comfortable with the approach that we're taking right now, and um, yeah, we'll continue to do so. Is that fielding, taking calls, or are you, are you aggressively recruiting Penn State players? You know, all I'm going to say is we're going to do what we think is appropriate. You know, and that's a lot of different ways to look at it. And again, I think just the, the things I'm reading nationally right now, I think a lot of different people are looking at it a lot of different ways. But, right. um, you know, we live in the conference. We work in this conference. I've got great respect for Bill O'Brien and his staff. And, you know, it's, uh, that's important to us as well. Kirk, you've talked about Joe Paterno in the past. What are your thoughts on now? You know, really the only thing I can say, uh, in, in driving in here last night, puts things in perspective. You, you, you know, you come in here uh, and just think about a year ago how everything looked as opposed to the way things look right now. It's just kind of a life lesson that things really can look very, very different. So uh, basically the whole thing is just really uh, one that's, for me, hard to comprehend. And uh, it's, it's complex as well. So it's really hard to comprehend. It's very, very complex. And, the only two things I know about Penn State right now is that uh, they handle us pretty much with these last fall, and we're expecting a really tough, tough game with them. I think they'll come in a team that'll be really focused and well coached in October. That's that's pretty much where it's at right now. Just one more thing: does this tarnish your image of, of Joe Paterno? You know, the only thing I would say there is again, you know, my guess is that everybody looks at things differently than they did a year ago. So I'll leave it at that. You know, my focus right now is our, our games with them, our competition. Does it give you any pause or make you think about what happens with the coaches or anybody when they're entrenched in a place for so long and they, they're in a position of power that to, to how you keep uh, reality or of sorts? Yeah, I think it's uh, not only true in coaching, but any any facet of life. You know, I think history, go way back, you know, history's. Things repeat themselves in history. And stories are different sometimes, uh, more extreme than others. But I think just as a person in general, everybody reflects what they do in life, and uh, you know, it's, you're learning as you move along. I, I, I couldn't even offer any thoughts on that because I've, I've never been in anything remotely, I don't think, similar to that. I'm not sure anyone has, so uh, I can tell you what it's like to, to go one in ten during your first year. Uh, I, can, I can speak with authority on that topic because I've lived it. The thing I'll tell you is they've got a lot of good players over there, and they've got an excellent coaching staff and an excellent head coach. And, you know, so I can't imagine anybody's better than Bill Brown to lead that program. Just, uh, It'll be difficult and challenging to push it. Just a couple more guys. Sometimes adversity brings the best out of people, too. Uh, all I know is, you know, put in perspective for us, when we play them on October 20th, I'm guessing it's going to be a really tough game. That's what I'm guessing, because I just know the people. Hey, I mean, outside, we don't uh, get a chance to see the defensive linemen that you have. I mean, not a lot, not long on experience. What do you know that we don't? Well, you know, I, mean, I know a little, yeah, a little, little bit more, more uh, maybe. A little bit. Yeah, you know, well, I mean, but I'm saying that in all sincerity. Uh, we haven't seen, not, none of us have seen play in games yet, but, but I can tell you that the group really improved in the 15 days that we had in all, uh, April and May, March. And, uh, you know, the first guy as you're talking comes to mind for me is Louis Trink. I saw the guy that was basically missing in action, literally missing in action. He took a couple day hiatus, and he wasn't sure if he was going to stay at the program back in early December. And he went from being that guy to a guy who was just out there basically in body uh, for the bowl preparation to being a guy maybe as one of the most important players on the team in, in March and April. So he hasn't played a game yet, but I have really reason to think that he's going uh, to play well in the years forward. And, uh, and conversely, a guy like Carl Davis, who I haven't seen uh, on the field because he was out there rehabbing, doing some work about the contact. Yet I see him in our building. I just see how his demeanor is different than it was a year ago and certainly two years ago. I've kind of compared him to a guy like Brandon Sheriff or uh, 
both guys came in at the same time. They're both big, talented guys, and I think are, are you know approaching that point where they're really ready to play maybe at a successful level or, uh, in our conference. So uh, you know, it's it's really that's kind of the intriguing part about you know what happens here in August. And I'm, I'm really anxious to see both those guys I just mentioned on the field and movie too. See what they do in August, and then obviously the real test is what happens in September. But, you got it, it's like uh, it's like years past. I think we've got some a chance for some good stories, and if we're going to have a good team, we're going to need those good stories. Um, Northwestern, hey, last question. with the you know new sexy type jerseys, sparkly or whatever. Uh, are you guys? I know you yeah, guys. You know more than I do. Uh, I'm going to so preface saw. it right now. Okay. Uh, do you guys? I know you guys have kind of toyed with the idea of pro combat. And, yeah. You know, the matte black and all that kind of stuff. Are you seriously? Con- it's kind of like spread offenses or, uh, <laughs> you know, 46 defenses. You know, it's, it is a sign of the time. Uh, sign of the times. And the kids like Twitter. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, we're, we're, I'll just say we're open to anything, offensively, defensively, special teams, and uniform and recruiting, all that stuff. You know, we'll, we'll keep our uh, an open mind. And, uh, you know, like everything else, we'll just try to figure out what really fits us, and that, that's what's important, what fits our program. But... It's not unrealistic to think that we're, you know, we're thinking about some things and, uh, and maybe have a wrinkle or two up our sleeves. You never know. Um, not that that's going to impact the game, but right, you know, right. uniform certainly won't. But maybe it will. Yeah, but those were all for it. Do you have anybody academically? Is everybody unscheduled? I think we're off? in pretty good shape. Yeah, I think we're, uh, it's, the guys have worked hard since January. We had our best spring semester ever. So okay. uh, that's an encouraging thing. It's not going to win a game for us, but it's encouraging. Great. Do you have anything Thanks, to say I'm about? Golf. Recruits who have committed to schools who get into trouble before they get to schools? Not really. Not, no, they just, you know, I would state the obvious. No, no. That's fine.